Hello everyone and again as always it is such a blessing to be able to bring you the word of God. I pray that everyone is doing well, that you're taking care of yourself, that you're yet reading, that you're yet praying. And if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Hebrews, the 13th chapter, and we're going to be looking at the 20th verse, and it reads, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect, complete, or mature in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus, and as always, we want to thank you for the reading and the hearing of your word. We ask that this word will go out and not return to your void, but it will accomplish what you sent it to do. Touch every heart and every mind, and it is in Jesus' name we pray. They that have ears to hear, let them hear, and we thank you. Amen. Today we want to talk about um, who we are, whose we are, and what it is that we have received through him. Amen. Um, this scripture that I just read was a great ending to the book of Hebrews in that um, God, our God, is a God of peace. Amen. And we have received his peace through the blood of Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Amen. Jesus told the disciples in the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, in the 27th verse, he said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. He says, Let not your heart or your mind be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, these are verses that could be uh, a comfort to many who are troubled in their spirit, their soul, their mind, and even in their bodies. Amen. And yet thinking about the goodness of Jesus, <laughs> um, the love of our Heavenly Father and the comfort of the Holy Ghost, I realize that there is more, that there is hope. Yet many do not have this hope. You see, people in general do not see themselves as God sees them. They don't see themselves as being loved, as being healed, as being prosperous, as being successful. They don't see that. Um, they don't see that they are sitting somewhat like in a cage in their minds um, where the door can be opened by believing on the word of God. Amen. They don't see that by believing that their sins are forgiven and that they are free from guilt and shame just from believing. Amen. So many people think, feel, and believe that they are rejected by God because they compromise their morals. At some point in time, they compromise their values or they just kind of like wasted their time, okay? Ashamed and burdened, they, they, they feel this way because they allow someone or something to trap them and to overpower them. And now they or it has bound them up or, or caught them up and they're fearful now of being exposed. Well, according to God's word, he loved us so much, amen, that he gave or sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to take our place. He sent Jesus to die, to pay the price for our sins. And listen, for all of our sins, amen. He said that if we believed in this truth, he said, then you wouldn't die, but have everlasting life. It says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn or judge the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Listen, you are only condemned because you don't believe. And that is the condemnation according to the word or judgment. It says that light is coming to the world, but men love darkness rather than light because of their evil ways. And you can reference that in John, the uh, third chapter, in the 16th through the 19th verse. There is nothing new under the sun. And you know, we say that all the time. And according to the word, it's true. And look, no one can hide anything from God either. And that's, um, that's a fact in itself. We saw um, at one time or another in the book of Ezekiel, that eight chapter, if you have your Bibles, turn with me there. We're going to look at that sixth verse. It says, when Ezekiel was in the spirit and saw a vision, God said to Ezekiel, son of man, he says, seest thou what they do? He says, even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here. He says that I should go far off from the sanctuary or from my holy place. And even then, if you think about it, it's happening now because I always say nothing should separate us from the love of God. But sin separates us from his presence. Amen. So it says in verse eight, then said he unto me, son of man, he says, dig into the wall. And he found a door 
And God said, go in and see the wicked things that they do. So he allowed him to see their idols. He wanted him to see what the ancients, if you read it for yourself, about 70 ancients, and these were people who knew better. Amen. He wanted them to see what they were doing in the dark. For they say, the Lord don't see us. You know, how many people, you know, go through situations or, or, circum or, or dealing with things and they think to themselves, oh, God, don't see or nobody's seeing me. But God saw it all and they worshiped. He saw them worshiping other gods and idols. And even in verse 16, it says they were worshiping the sun. Amen. So they were in the dark then as many are even now. And for everyone that sins or does evil hates the light or truth. And this is in the scriptures in itself. It says for everyone that sins and does evil hates the light and don't come into the light or don't want the truth because the evil ways will be exposed. It makes me so sad to see people hurting. And I'm sure it does you too. The same people going through the same thing or doing the same things and getting the same results. If you think about it, being in church, singing in a choir or with whatever kind of group or saying that you're a Christian, being on a committee, being a minister, a, a teacher, a deacon, trusty bishop, pastor, or shepherd, it means nothing if you're not changing. Amen? We have to stop making excuses for bad behavior. So if we're not changing in some kind of way, the way we think, the way we talk, the way we act, the way we carry ourselves, the way we treat people, then it doesn't mean anything. Amen? So the scripture said that God desires to make us complete in him. He wants us to be mature, to grow up in every good work, to, be, uh, to do his will. It's him actually working in us, both the will and to do of his good pleasure, or working in us to do those things that are pleasing to him. But we have to allow him to do this. And a lot of people don't seem to um, understand that. The scripture says that we are new creatures in Christ. Old things are passed away. Through him, it says everything has become new. It also says that we are ambassadors. We are representatives of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the earth. No matter where we are, no matter who we're with, we are to represent him. And I thought about, um, and it's probably with any business or anything, but when I was in the military, and they used to tell us all the time, you have on that uniform, when you get off work, you take off your uniform, but you are a soldier. You are a soldier 24-7. So wherever you go, whatever you do, you're representing the United States Army. And so it's the same thing when it comes to Christ. No matter where we are, no matter what we do, 24-7, we are representing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? So what he's saying here is um, Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin for us. And as I said before, he's the one that paid the price for us. He took upon himself when he hung on Calvary's cross to bear the burden of our shame, our guilt, no matter what. No, nothing should cause us to be burdened or nothing should cause us to be um, ashamed. Amen. Um, it's life. A lot of times it, it is life. It's growing. It's maturing. But at the same time, we are free through what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. So it's meaning here that from the time that we believed on the name of Jesus, from the time that we accepted him as our Lord and Savior, we should have started growing. Amen. As newborn babes desiring the sincere milk of the word, at some point or another, we should have dug down, so to speak, and began to grow. Okay? And many did. Don't get me wrong. Many did. They came into this, uh, they accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and they took off. But listen, many did not. Okay? So who's to blame? Jesus, the word of God, is available to all of us this day and time. And there are some amazing uh, pastors and teachers and shepherds um, of the word. They do a wonderful job who truly care um, about the growth of, your, of, of their flocks. They care about the souls of their people. They care about what they're doing and what they're not doing. They care about what they have <clears throat> and what they don't have. And yet, there are those who don't. Amen? So when you ask the question, who's to blame, 
Well, God, who sees everything, back in the book of Ezekiel, the 34th chapter, he blamed the leaders or the shepherds who did not lead by example, who did not care about the growth or the, the flock, so to speak, who did not uh, care about anything but themselves. Amen. It says in Ezekiel 34, this is the first, it says, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel that feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? God was upset because the diseased were not strengthened. He said that the sick were not healed. He said that those that were driven out or um, scattered were not gathered. They weren't sought after. No one went to look for them. He says because the shepherds fed themselves. They prospered themselves. They looked out for themselves and not God's people. And if you continue to read, and I would ask you to read Ezekiel 34, 1 through the 31st verse for the whole uh, meaning of it. But if you continue to read, you'll see that in verses 22 and 23, God said, I will save my flock. He said, I will set up some shepherd. I will set up one shepherd over them and shall feed them. Jesus, he says, even my servant David, he shall feed them and he shall be their shepherd. And as we all know, as I said earlier, it came through Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it seems that it is as messed up now as it was back then. And as I stated earlier, there's nothing new under the sun. If you look at history, life itself, it's like a pattern. You know, you have to teach one to do good. You teach one to do bad. As they grow up, they're only going to share what they learned, right? So if I learn to do good, I'm going to teach good. If I learn to do bad, I'm going to teach bad. Not necessarily. <laughs> Amen. Because sometimes the wheat and the tares get mixed in together. And it's a process. Amen. And that's why you can't never get up. They that endure to the end shall be saved. So from this, we can be encouraged because in spite of all things, it says God so loved. And that's encouraging because the God of peace, as we said earlier, that brought again, from the dead, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant is making us perfect. He is helping us to become complete and mature in every good work to do his will. So we are spirit beings. We belong to God, our creator, and we have forgiveness, peace, and true friendship through him. So when you're looking at the word of God and, and, and your life, don't be so caught up in, how you say, being taken captive because of the fact that we have been set free through Jesus. Amen. So as long as you continue to grow, as long as you continue to uh, press, as long as you continue to know within yourself that God has already made the way, you may fall down today, but get back up. You may fall down another day, but get back up. The important thing is the fact that you're up. Amen. And we have to know always and be encouraged always, um, as the scripture says, to encourage ourselves in the Lord and in his word to know that he is always with us. No matter who is in our ear, no matter what's going on, no matter what we think, just be encouraged and know that God's word is what he says. And if you believe according to his word, you will have everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, we come in the name of Jesus, and again, we want to thank you for this word. We ask even more that your divine will be done. We thank you for the truth. We pray that as they go back to read, oh God, that you would just minister to them and enlighten the eyes of their understanding. Help them to know, eternal God, that it's not about being exposed for what we're doing wrong, but it's about being exposed for who we are and doing what is right. We thank you so much for your love, and we ask even more that your divine will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again, we want to thank you for this time together in fellowship. We ask that you would visit our website, that you would share, like, and subscribe. We also ask that you would just continue to read your word, to pray, to um, encourage yourself in the Lord, and encourage one another to know that no matter what, God so loved. Amen. Until next time.